how to test. Supplies you need are swabs. Um, they can be uh, individually wrapped Dacon swabs, which is most recommended. What I use, of course, but I work at a university. So what else can you use in a shelter setting if you don't have the fancy swabs? You can use the culturette portion of bacterial culturettes and throw this piece away. Don't swab a dog and then plunge it into the auger because that will totally negate testing by PCR. And you can even use the old wooden handle Q-tip type swab uh, that you can get at CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, anywhere like that. So um, not having swabs or should not be a barrier to doing this test because you can, I'm sure you could probably use the old plastic Q-tips that they sell for cleaning ears if you needed to. Um, and then you need some sterile plain red top tubes because that's going to be what you put the swab in after uh, uh, swabbing the dog. You must wear exam gloves because PCR is so sensitive, it's subject to false positives by detecting stray DNA on people's hands that have touched contaminated surfaces in the environment or have rubbed the face of the sick dog during the swab collection and then the person goes and handles the next dog down the line they want to swab and they're just transferring whatever was on dogs upstream. So you must wear exam gloves, they don't have to be sterile, and you must change between dogs. You need to collect at least two swabs for each dog uh, from different sites, conjunctival, nasal, the pharyngeal, doesn't matter which combination, just get two swabs because that will maximize the opportunity of pathogen detection. And here's a, um, an, an illustration of how to do a conjunctival swab. Love this, love this, because dogs don't mind it. They stand perfectly still for this. It's apparently not bothersome to them. So you're just taking the Q-tip part and rubbing off some of the epithelial cells in that conjunctival sac. Dogs hate this. Very difficult to get a nasal swab other than just, you don't want to just swab right here at the nasal opening. You need to get in there. And they'll give you one shot, and then that's it. You'll never get it again. So you better, you, better, you know, practice a little bit, and then phew, you won't get it again. So um, then, so the other option besides conjunctival swabs, will be to open wide and swab back there at the tonsils, kind of like what physicians do to us when they want to test for strep, strep throat. Stay off the tongue. Don't bring up a big spitball because uh, that, um, that uh, heavily con uh, samples heavily uh, contaminated with saliva um, are not very good for PCR testing. And then you stick the swabs down into the red top tube snap the handle, whether it's plastic or wooden, and to release the tip itself down into the tube. And then get rid of the handle. And here's a sample of a uh, tip in there. But what's missing? I said collect two swabs per dog. This one only has one. So you actually, when you get the second swab, you just stick it right in there, that same tube with the first one and snap the handle, close the tube, and the top and off it goes to the lab. Do we need to worry about when to collect the samples, the timing of swabbing? Yes, we do. Because the timing of sample collection is very much affected by each respiratory pathogen's incubation period and shedding period. You obviously want to swab dogs when the pathogen is there because PCR is a test that looks for the pathogen itself. So we have to be sure we're choosing the correct dogs um, to, uh, to get a, a, a shedding sample uh, for, for all of the pathogens. And notice that the incubation period for all of these uh, major uh, viral players is less than one week, which means that the dogs are not going to be shedding 
um, are not um, going to be, well, let me put it this way. Most viral pathogens are shed in highest amount during the incubation period. The incubation period is defined from the time of actual infection to the time of onset of clinical signs. That can be two days, that can be four days, it can be seven days, and in the case of distemper, one of the things that makes it so bad, on average, it's two weeks between the time of infection and the dog starts showing clinical signs, and the whole time it's infectious. It's in that typhoid Mary's, Mary's um, uh, stage. So um, you need to get dogs that are more acutely affected. They've only been sick for two to three days. Not, dogs have been sick for seven or 14 days. Pathogens probably gone except for distemper. They shed for a very short period of time, except for the bad boy, where dogs will shed distemper virus and all secretions from the body for weeks to months. It's, it's hard if you're, if you're um, testing for this, it doesn't really matter which dogs you select because if they're infected with distemper and they're still ill, you're likely gonna find the virus. All the other dogs, it's highly dependent upon the shedding period. So you wanna get cases that are acute onset. You don't wanna stop there. Don't just look at the sick dogs. Get all the dogs housed in the same run, all the litter mates, dogs across the aisle way, dogs that have been exposed to the sick dogs, test them too. The reason is because if they're infected and they're in that clinically silent incubation period, they're gonna be shedding tons of virus. It also lets you know how far this is spread but beyond the nucleus of the sick dogs. And you want to test at least 10, at least 10. I am asked this question all the time. Well, can we just do one or two dogs? No, no. You have to do at least 10 in a population, 10, you know, five sick dogs that have been sick for one, three days, five dogs in house nearby that aren't sick. And by testing this number, it will um, increase drastically the accuracy of your uh, test result and whether there is a pathogen or pathogens that are actually responsible for the infection of most of the dogs. So it, it's, it, it looks for a pattern. You're not gonna hinge your diagnosis based on testing of one or two dogs and thinking that's actually what's going on with everybody. It needs to be a good sampling. And yes, it does take some resource investment up front. What's that thing that Dr. Newberry said yesterday? Pay now or pay later. And this is why you want to test acute and exposed. Here's virus amount over the first seven days of infection. So this is typical for all the viruses except for the stemper. Incubation periods are less than seven days from infection to onset of clinical signs. So here's the amount or degree of illness the dogs are showing up until they could be coughing, have kennel cough on for two weeks. But you want to get dogs here where they're shedding the most amount of virus for this test to pick up. 